The next presentation is uh, by uh, Joe Galli. Uh, Joe Galli is uh, instrumental into uh, bringing uh, many people here together working on hereditary aortic disorder, but certainly uh, very much involved when he started the clinic at the Montreal Heart Institute. So it is a pleasure to have him talk about patient and family perspective. What is it to live with an irritable aortic disorder diagnosis? Four p.m. December twenty-fourth, two thousand nine. Uh, Dr. Uh, Rocio Moran, Cleveland Clinic, calls Christmas Eve. Says Alexander has got Louis Dietz. The world fell on our heads. That's how it felt. Two weeks later, we tested myself and my wife, Joanne, and she was positive. Again, the world fell on our head. Two months later, we tested our other two boys, Thomas and Noah, and Thomas had it. So, 50% autosomal dominant disease. We've got two of three. We should be buying lotto tickets, right? Um, it's, at that point, I stopped working, and my focus was to take care of them. Life expectancy at that point was 27 years old. Alex was 15. Thomas was 13. Joanne is an outlier, okay? At least that's what we thought at the time. So we reached out to people around us and we essentially started this foundation. But we spent six months going back and forth to Cleveland because we couldn't get proper attention or access to healthcare here without waiting six or eight or nine months. And the reason that we were in such a rush is that Alexander's pectus had evolved from negligible to big enough to put my fist into. His back had curved from zero to 32 degrees in 10 weeks. So your rate of change, your delta rate of change was like this. So as a, uh, a parent, uh, and I'm a business guy, I have, no, I have no medical background, but as a parent, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, hey, wait a second, something's really wrong here and it's going too fast. We were lucky to have the financial ability to go to the United States and get care, which we did, and we spent six months every two weeks back and forth for our three patients. So during that period of time, uh, essentially, the only job was keeping them alive, understanding what we could about the disease. There was very little known. If you went on the web, it was the ugliest thing around uh, because what you were seeing were all of the more severe cases. So I'm a spouse. I'm the you know, breadwinner. Uh, I'm the father. All of those roles all of a sudden focus into one job, keep them alive for as long as possible. It, it, for, there's a lot of young kids here, and I'm not talking down to you in terms of age, but for the older ones here who have hair that either has disappeared or is gray, you'll understand that you, know, you expect your children to outlive you. Okay. And here we're facing this situation. So it was, it was extremely difficult at the beginning to try and create an environment for the children of normalcy. I'll let you in on a little secret. When I was 15, my career objectives were to be a pilot, okay? failing that to be a playboy, and failing that to be a social worker. Those are my three objectives, okay? <laughs> I didn't even know what business was. It was a bad thing and all of that. And by the way, I really enjoyed girls. So those were kind of my major highlights. I wasn't worried about, you know, is there a Damocles sword hanging over my head? Is that pain I'm feeling right now, that I'm wondering, am I dissecting? Is there something happening here to me that's not normal? I, said, I was getting up literally sitting there. Uh, it brought me back to I was presenting to a very well-known university in Boston, and the phone rang. And uh, it was my wife saying that Alexander was in an ambulance to the ER. And then I had to get up and speak. And I was, I was speaking at Grand Rounds. I was fortunate to have the opportunity to do that. And I said to the people, I gotta apologize because right now my son is an ambulance. And you see, every time this rings, my anxiety level goes up. So I'm gonna share with you what it feels like now. Every time the phone rings, and I see it's one of my family members, my anxiety level goes up. Why does it go up? Because I'm expecting the worst. I'm always expecting something negative to happen. The sense of peace and tranquility doesn't exist anymore. And I know for my wife, 
who has the disease, and I know for my children, even though they don't say it, it's the same thing for them. So why is this important for you? Why am I sharing this with you? Because you have to look beyond the diagnosis. You have to look, sorry, I'm glad they put Kleenex, thank you. You gotta look beyond the diagnosis, you gotta look at the people, and you gotta look at the families. The impact is tremendous. And when I was a little kid and we played outside, and for the older people again with gray hair, who used to play outside, um, not playing with this, when you got thirsty, you didn't go in the house. You went and you took a garden hose from your neighbor and you drank from the garden hose, right? And some people are, yeah, I used to do that. And I, I, I think of that in light or in the same context of our disease and what's happening. You are responsible for keeping up to date with all the latest and the greatest. Okay? You have a tremendous responsibility. Except for you're not drinking out of a little hose anymore, the garden hose you're drinking out of a fire hose, out of a fire hydrant. That's how much new information is coming at us all and you as professionals every day. Why am I bringing this up? Because you need to look beyond the diagnosis, you gotta look at the family, you gotta look at the individuals, and you gotta form a team. Remember the first time pediatric we were seeing uh, Tiscar um, at the children's with our boys, just getting, we were transferring the file from the States to Montreal. This car walk, uh, Dr. Kebiagadeo, sorry, I shouldn't, uh, walks in. Hello, how are you? We're all there, do the whole thing. Oh, Lois Dietz. She says, give me a minute. She turns around, walks out, comes back 15 minutes later and says, I just did a quick read up on it because I don't know the disease. And she said, what can you tell me about it? Okay, I remember that very, very well. The key distinguishing factor was, what can you tell me about it? She asked us for our input. And that's how we formed a team together. And so when you are dealing with people like us, this is not just a diagnosis. It's, it changes our lives completely, okay? I feel guilty that I don't have it. My youngest son who doesn't have it feels guilty. We worry about each of our different family members every, all day long. We wonder what a normal life would look like. We don't have that because there's always some issue. And then when things seem to stabilize, then you get hit with a baseball bat. Okay, and something else hits. Because we don't even have a natural history to the disease. Can't even tell you that this will happen in this period of time and this will happen in this period of time. So we live with this constant fear and uncertainty. I can tell you that if any of you have lived with constant fear and uncertainty, like you're about to pass your medical exam and you're really worried and stressed and thinking about your future and I won't become a doctor and I won't make it and I'll go work at McDonald's and all those things that go through your mind when you're thinking about doing all of that, it's not fun. It's not healthy. It's not positive. So can I see a show of hands how many residents or fellows are in the room today? Ah, fantastic. Thank you. They're our future. You guys are our future. And I'm going to take, come back to Tiscar again. I'm going to talk about Dr. Helen Mamsey. I'm going to talk about, I mean, I could go on and on and on. The people in this room that have been open to us and have adopted an attitude of collaboration and teamwork. And that, as patients, brings our stress level down. It doesn't eliminate it, but it does bring our stress level down, and it allows us to believe that we have some hope. We have some hope for the future because we got the right people in our camp. We built the right team around us, okay? So for that, I say thank you. For you young kids out there, you're not gonna have all the answers. We don't have all the answers, but together we can come up with strategy to address the issues and try and create longer life expectancy, number one, and number two, better quality of life. So it's like getting hit with a baseball bat every day. I go to bed every night, I do a gratitude exercise, and I say thank you, I've had another day. And thank you, I've had another day with my children and with my wife. And I get up in the morning and I'm excited because I've got another day with my children and my wife. You want to know what it's like? The little things in life, you know, there's a book, don't sweat, uh, don't sweat the Small Stuff and yada, 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 yada. Our, um, or mine, and I can tell you others because I've had this discussion, our tolerance for bullshit, excuse my language, is zero. Okay? I have zero tolerance for that. I have no time to waste for that. So when we're people that don't appreciate or don't understand, you know what, it's move on. And I will tell you it's the same thing with people that are medical professionals. 
you're going to go oh, by what I'm going to tell you next. We fired a bunch of them. Just fired two more recently. Okay, and you say, well, how can you do that? Because the way I look at it is it's a collaborative team. And if a team member is not playing and is not doing their part, get the hell off the, off of the uh, playing field. Okay? Because the game is a big game. It's our lives. So we, at the end of the day, we can make a difference together working in a holistic collaborative model. What Ismail, Francois Pierre, um, Nancy, and the whole team have put together uh, at uh, Montreal Heart is a good example of how it brings our stress down. Okay? Because when we sit down, we're looking at this from a holistic standpoint. There's less chance of getting hit by a baseball bat or something unexpected. So more and more, when people say to us, you know, well, this is a really complicated disease, and I've had doctors basically say to us, this is too complicated, I'm not interested. Okay? Fired, by the way. Okay? <laughs> I've had an endocrinologist tell us that the thyroid has no impact on the heart. Fired, by the way. Okay? I, guys, I have no medical background, but I can read a little bit. I can figure that there is a correlation between the two. So end of the day, it's a matter of how do we all work together and how do we work together towards making a difference? I have no medical background. I have no skill set in your space. You guys are, I, I brought some guests here today who are very supportive board members and advisors, and I was asking them at lunch, so what do you think of the conference? They said, my God, you're the smartest people I've ever met. And it's true. This room has got more IQ than I can count. You guys are super smart in this space. Over here, or over here, maybe sometimes not so much. And I'm not ditzing anybody. I've had this discussion with quite a few of you at different points in time. And that's where we can work together. That's where we can collaborate. I have no smarts in this space. I have a little bit over here, maybe a little bit over here, and so do other people. And so by pooling our resources and coming together, we can make a difference. Okay? So what's life like? Stressful all the time. When the phone rings, I get an anxiety attack. Okay? Be very honest with you. My phone is on all the time. Business meetings, travel, day and night. I've got four numbers that I want to, if they, those, one of those four numbers come up, I answer that phone. Okay? Every time we, something changes in their physiology or in how they're doing, it affects something else. We haven't even talked about the emotional health component. Put yourselves in the shoes of your patients, in this case my boys who are at the time 13 and 15. What are they worried? Everybody in this room, when you were in 13 and 15, who did not feel invincible? Everybody here, when we were kids, all felt invincible. We thought the future was ours, we can do whatever we've set our minds to, right? That's gone. That naivete that we grew up with is gone. So, end of the day, our objective as a foundation, one is to share, and we, and we feel very fortunate and privileged, and thank you for our team with Had One, and our team with Had Two for pulling this off and, and bringing it together, and we will expand this as we go across the country. This was in Toronto last year, it's in Montreal this year, it's Halifax, and then we'll go out west after that, and we'll rotate. Okay. Our objective is to be a catalyst and to help you in your jobs to help us. And it's as a collaborative model, that's what we're interested in doing with you guys. Okay. So if there's any young people here that want to get involved and want to be a part of what we're building, come and see me, come and see anybody with one of these jackets on, and we'll find a way to help you guys help us so that we can help you. In that vein, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna pretend I'm your financial advisor now, and I'm gonna ask you, Ismail, if you give me $15,000 and I give you back a return on your investment of $1,064,000 or $46,000, is that a good return on your investment? Uh, between the three and six, I'd say no. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else think that that's a good return on your investment? Thanks, Ismail, appreciate that. But. <laughs> So um, five years ago, six years ago, uh, a um, doctor at Hopkins, uh, Pam Guerrero, had an idea around GI and allergy related to our disease state. She works in Dr. Dietz's lab. Nobody would give her 15,000, not 50,000, nobody would give her $15,000 to do her research. Our US Foundation gave her $15,000 to her research. It was out of the box, okay? It was completely out of what anybody thought. She went on and she got a million forty-six thousand dollars. But more importantly, she went on to get a full-time lab at the NIH. Okay, 
I'm an investor. Hey guys, I'll talk to you in my language. That's 100 times return on my money. Okay, not talking financial return, I'm talking about in terms of moving the disease, moving the needle on the disease. So that's something that she did. So we took that and we inspired ourselves and we partnered with Salesforce, which is a technology company. We got them to donate a, a platform. And then we got a couple of uh, volunteers, Lindsay who's in the back and Thomas, I'm not sure where you are. Um, and Lindsay essentially spent about 3,000 person hours over the past four years building a database of every piece of research done on Lois Dietz and manually curating it and then entering it into this database so that we can now start to search and cross-reference and, and pull information together. Why this is important is because our intention, next slide please, is to find the youngest, not the youngest, sorry, the brightest minds, the young bright minds, the old bright minds get money, the young bright minds have to fight for the money. Our objective is to find the young people out there globally that we can recruit into our disease state to do research and to work with us in a collaborative fashion. So to that effect, what we will do, we just got the green light starting in uh, Q1 2020, so first quarter of next year, which is coming up shortly. We'll do our first grant of $25,000 US um, to a worthy participant. It's gonna be a global initiative. It eventually will scale to 10 per year and then to 50 per year. Okay, that's the objective. Why? If one out of 10 does like Dr. Guerrero did, and we did that every year, in 10 years from now, we would start to move the needle on a series of areas. Secondly, who uses Tinder here? It's okay, you don't have to tell me if you use Tinder. <laughs> swipe right or swipe left, I'm not sure which it is because I don't use Tinder, but we wanna Tinderize the kids. I know that sounds kind of funny. What I want to do is I want to match make. I want to find the young kid who's here with the old gray-haired person over there who may not take that call, who may not be overly open to having a discussion and putting the two together. Okay. So our second objective will be one, to give cash, and two will be to match make the different parties. Okay. We want to be a catalyst and instigate research globally we also want to be able to categorize the research to see what's being done to avoid duplication. So that if two people are working on the same thing, say, hey, why don't you put your heads together and come together and do something? And we intend to finance that as well. So, you know, Ismail asked me to speak a little bit about what it's like to be a patient. I think I've given you a fairly, or a family member and, and a patient, I think I've given you a fairly good idea. It sucks, okay? I'm gonna leave you with one thought and you're gonna be surprised by what I'm gonna say. I'm actually grateful for the disease. How can that be? Because life becomes very clear. Bullshit, no time. What's important are the things that are important depending on me. For me, it's family. And seeing that my family grows and, and prospers. That's what's important to me. So all the things that we get hung up on, the little sweating the small stuff, non-issue. The other element though is we've made some friendships that I can say are the deepest friendships I've ever had in my life. I don't know where Sal and Francois are. If you want to just shake your hand somewhere. Thank you, up there. Um, so quick story. First, the Lois Dietz Conference in Baltimore we attend. We're meeting with Duke Cameron. Does anybody know, some people here know Duke Cameron? Duke Cameron has a wee bit of an accent, okay? Very deep South accent. Duke sits down, my wife sits down. My wife has a little bit of an accent. Duke looks to my wife and says, you've got an accent. My wife looks to Duke and says, no, you got the accent. I said, okay, time out, the two of you. Enough with the pissing match. He says, no, no, no. He says, I got a lady in my OR whose son just, or in my, in my recovery, whose son just had surgery, has the same accent as you. That happened to be Francoise. She says, so we had to go to Baltimore to meet somebody with Lois Dietz in Montreal that became our partners to start the foundation and have created a lifelong friendship. So I consider ourselves very privileged to have people like that. I could think of, I'm, I'm looking at you and there's too many of you even to mention your names, but in this room, people that have become friends and are important to us in our lives and we appreciate that. So I just wanna leave you with this. For the young people in this room, look past the diagnosis, form a bond and a partnership with your patients because that's gonna make a huge difference. You don't have all the answers. You never will, you can't. And it's not fair for us to have an expectation of that. 
we have to do our homework. We have to come prepared. We've got to be good patients. We've got to be compliant. We've got to do all the things that are required. But it's a team effort. Thank you very much. Any questions? I'll take any, if you have questions. Thank you. So, uh, touch wood if this is wood. Uh, aortic root uh, is not an issue right now for us, so thank goodness. Uh, we have had um, cancer. We've had uh, back surgery. We've had double eye surgery, major GI issues. We have uh, major uh, thyroid issues, which then affect the heart, uh, on and on and on. So we have 13 specialists that look after our family. Um, we, you know, we spend a lot of time in and out of hospitals and doctors' offices. So do I feel better? No, honestly, I don't. Because as I understand more, what makes me feel better is to take the negative energy and the anger that I have and the frustration and put it into things like this where we can make a difference. Thank you. Other questions? Don't be afraid to ask personal questions. The young kids here, don't be afraid to ask questions. Excuse me. No. Can we get the mic on, please? You really showed us how important the patient is part of the disease. We are specialists of the disease, but you are the specialists of living the disease. You have a very articulated man, and your family is too articulable. But how can we help? families who don't have the articulation you have. And this is the people we see every day at the Okay, la question c'est qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire pour les gens qu'on voit quotidiennement qui n'ont pas nécessairement la façon d'articuler la discussion qu'on fait aujourd'hui. So the question is how do we help people that don't necessarily have the ability to articulate and, and look at it this way. Found, that's right, part of what the foundation is for. So um, our role, just and thank you for bringing it up, and I'll use that as a segue in. Um, our role is to provide, we do three things, awareness. So we've now done 1,200 medical presentations. We've built the algorithm with uh, Hopkins and others, uh, you know, yada, 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 to be able to allow you to have the tools, number one. Number two is support. So we actually build multidisciplinary teams. I have doctors that re and surgeons that refer the patients directly to us. We go through what we call a head to toe, it takes two hours to do per patient, and we review every body system. Because literally, in Louise Dietz, it's your head, it's your eyes, it's your face, it's your chest, it's your back, it's your joints, it's your GI system, it's your allergy. If you're a female and you're pregnant, it's the issues around that, um, on and on and on. So what I would recommend is, uh, you in your packages, you each got a blue, um, uh, a gift bag or goodie bag, you have all our contact information, my business card is there. Anytime you call me or give it to a patient and have them call me, okay? We will take care of them. We will help them to build a team. The other thing we get is we sometimes get doctors that'll call us and say, or even surgeons and say, we got a funky case or we got something we're not sure what to do with. Have you seen this before? We'll find you an answer, okay? Or we'll plug you into people that can find you the answer. So we'll support you and we'll support the patient. Est-ce que ça répond à votre question? Other questions? Good. Thank you. Thank you very. Thank you very much. <laughs>